Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin the Food Entrepreneur's Podcast. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I W Z A W R O. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Justin Bizarro. You can also find the podcast at Justin the Food Entrepreneur's on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find our new podcast, The Centurion Leadership Battalion. Uh, at Centurion Leadership Battalion on Facebook and Instagram as well. So thank you everyone for listening in. Uh, thank you for all the feedback. Uh, thank you everyone for continuing to share hope in their experiences and all the messages and, and direct messages I am trying to keep up. I apologize that it takes me so long to reply to all of them, but I am trying to keep up with everyone and all the requests to be on the podcast. So I appreciate all of you guys, and I appreciate all the interest in the Food and Beverage Entrepreneur Summit. Again, as I said on the uh, other episodes, we're going to still have it, uh, even if it's a live feed into your home or uh, do it in person. Uh, if we do it in person, there will be a live feed also, And uh, but please still register for tickets. They are free on Eventbrite, so thank you, everyone. So today I have with us... Again, for their second episode, Kevin Clark and Lisa Spooner of Homegrown out of Atlanta, Georgia. How are you guys doing today? We've seen better, honestly. I can honestly say it's not the same as last time we talked. Yeah, I know. Um, so tell us a little bit. Let, let's back up for a second and give everyone a quick you know, history, even though they can go back and listen to the other episode. Give us a quick history of how you got to Homegrown and then... From there, we'll sort of talk about what's going on and the struggles that are sort of going on in the world and how it affects you guys. Okay. Yeah, um, we started Homegrown. It's 10 years now, 10 years ago. I went to culinary school, did the fine dining thing for a little bit. Um, At least I got into an accident, had a bit of a life-changing experience. Um, looked at life differently. Always wanted to open a restaurant, didn't know what I wanted, what we wanted to do. Um, so it was like, you know, we could be dead. Let's make it, let's open a restaurant near us, which we did. And we did a casual Southern diner, um, in a pre existing restaurant called Mammy's that had been there for probably 40 something years. We opened. It took off. Um, Business has been great for the first 10 years. Um, It's every year's gotten better and better and better. We have an amazing staff. We have amazing customers. We serve just simple comfort food. But um, like I said, we just keep it simple. And it's just a a family-type atmosphere, and it's just fun up until – last week when everything changed drastically a little too fast for us to really handle. And here we are today with a completely different look at what we're doing. Cause I mean, I'll just tell you off the get go, we closed our restaurant today. Not permanently, not permanently, but until we can figure out what is going on or until this situation gets figured out, which is scary because nobody knows. Nobody knows. There's no answers. There's no guide. Every day is new, new information that, you know, double talks over what you just went to bed knowing was going to be what your next day was going to hold. And then they changed it and reissued it again in the morning. So it's like, we plan hour by hour at this point, not even week to week or day to day. Yeah. I mean, our first struggle last week was we let 40 employees go, which we would have never thought we would have to do. And then, like I said, making today's decision. Puts For it. the health of everyone. Yeah, at this and that's point, what we did you know, today. I mean, it was not even about the financial part of things. It's, it got so big that now it's about taking care of your family and making sure they're not put in the line of danger in regards to like trying to make that extra dollar, but you're handing to go food to someone that, you know, 
may be infected in some way. And now that potential is there. And then they go home to their brand new babies and, you know, share it with them. So I, at this point, would rather close and deal with it this way than remain open for that little bit of money that's going to come in and risk someone's health or their family's health. Well, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, Yeah. We sound so overjoyed, don't we? I keep hearing Kevin and I talk and it's just the winds out of our sails today. Well, and it's, we're in a tough situation right now. And I think that that's, um, you know, it's part of the hardship right now is that situation. And, um, but I mean, let's, let's talk about what you just said a little bit. I mean, the reality is, is how much business by going to go, were you got, were you guys actually doing a lot of business? I mean, because I mean, this thing happened so suddenly it's like everyone stopped eating out almost. Right. I mean, we did some business, but I think at the beginning, it is those who are like, we're here to support you. We're here to support you, which is fine. But I don't think it's worth it. I mean, yeah. there needs to be a stopping point to allowing people to still go out and socialize in the only way they know how, which is being close to someone and shaking their hand or hugging them. So especially when they come out and see Kevin – who they're used to hugging and sitting with and talking to at the restaurant, they're not going to keep six feet away or they're not going to only just pull up in the car. They're going to come and search him out in the kitchen even to see, you know, and and it's so it's hard to tell your community that's supporting you and showing such love to, you know, step back and stay away. And we need to do it a certain way. It's just, you just can't. And then to be able to stay a safe distance from Uh the staff that does come in to help, it's like not it's just not practical in trying to run a business that way. Yeah, I agree. Um well not to mention <laughs> it's just a, you're making a lot of effort now for a few meals. I've seen a lot of the restaurants even near us in Colorado or people I know of that called they're trying to do to go business or grab and go business and they're just it's it's almost even worse because they're not only do they have their fixed overhead But now they're also having employees there that they're paying, and they're paying the employees way more than they're actually making on the to-go meal. So, and there's the health risk, yeah, which is you know, like I said, a lot of this when it first started for us is you just keep thinking about the bills. Like I sat and rattled off to Kevin what our power bill was, and that you know what our sales tax and business license renewal is April first, and now it's to the point where that's not even on my mind. I just focused on the health aspect of it, especially they, you know, they released the new guidelines last night, the mayor and the governor. And a lot of it is about if you have a compromised system, especially respiratory system that you need to stay home. And that's Kevin. He's not going to stay home in the middle of this. And so uh, eventually just becomes a point where you have to put your foot down and say, in order to keep Kevin healthy, we can't have the the restaurant open anymore. So, so one of the things, and, and I, I want to really get into the whole thing, but also one of the things I saw that you guys have done is the GoFundMe to help some of the 40 employees you guys have had to let go in, in the fund there, and it's online. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're not ones to do this. I mean, our staff did well. Um, you know, like I said, business was good. And then, I mean – I, I've only worked in restaurants. I mean, this is all I've ever done. I've always worked in kitchens. So I know coming from this world that it's paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it is. I mean, that's how a lot of restaurant people survive. I mean, you just, your next check is. I mean, that's how most people survive. But not just I know, people. but that's all I know. So for, you know, to put that out there, knowing it's not gonna, I don't know what it's going to do for them, but. You know, whatever it's it's almost to the point where whatever we can do to help them, and if asking for help is one thing, then we got to do it. And we've had good support, and you know, we've made some money. And I'm just going to leave it going. I don't know how long you can do it because it's all new to me. So it's just 
any way we can do it. I mean, for example, today we went into the restaurant, we closed it, but I took all the vegetables and I made a huge thing of vegetable soup and I made a huge thing of meat and vegetable soup. And, you know, we reached out to our employees said, come get as much as you can, like freeze it. You know, it's only right now we're just trying to help our little family as much as we can. It's, it's all we can do. Um, you know, as much as looking after ourselves, you know, they're at, they're all going to be in need, I, you know, and what, what the way I feel about it is right now, I don't think it's sunk in what's going on. And I don't think it's sunk in for me completely what's going on. Like leaving the restaurant today was like, I'll be going back tomorrow, but I'm not. And, you know, it's just unknown. I mean, it's just, it's almost too much to even comprehend to tell you the truth. Yeah. Like, I agree. It's like the reality of it is this really just happened. Like this is not a snowstorm. This isn't like a power outage. This isn't a tornado just came through. This is, I mean, a tsunami. I don't even know what you call it. It's no. And it's so weird that life all around you still looks the same, except for there aren't, you know, people around or businesses around, but it's not like he's saying like a tsunami or a hurricane or whatever. There's usually devastation that is part of that, that you're almost working through that part of it and not the actual financial part where this is like, everything is normal, but it just came to a screeching halt. Yeah. Well, and it, we, and at least when a, a natural disaster happens, it happens and then you move on and there's sort of a goal in sight to move forward from. We're not even sure what right. that is right now so i mean everyone's hopeful and we're trying to build hope but at the same time the longer this goes on the yeah, more financial the consequences there are the more consequences there are to the businesses and the people and the employees and the less money is being spent in the market and mm-hmm. i mean we're just at this point we're in a spiral and yeah. so um, but there's known help like for a natural a disaster of a tsunami or a hurricane or a tornado there is money that is allocated for that. Like it's instant, like sin relief. We got it. You know, this shows up the red cross. There's, you know, they can sign into law, like money, there's money allocated. FEMA shows up and they're, you know, what do you need? We got this like this. There's not, I mean, everything that we ever hear is it might happen or, you know, Possibly. they're fighting in, up in Washington about, you know, agreeing on terms. It's like, this is right now. Like, this is not a – we got to sit and wait and wonder and let them tell us what we should and shouldn't do. Like, we, you know, we were like, we just want the governor to say you're shut down. We just want the mayor to say you're shut down. Like, it's like having a parent tell you, like, no, you're not leaving the house. It's not safe. Like, we're not getting any answers like that. We're, like, we're not being told what we can – I mean, we're being told what, what we can do to try to survive. But, but it's not feasible right. for what it would take for us to actually survive. No. You're telling a big group of people, you got to stay home and you cannot go out. And you're telling a small group of people, you can stay in business. So what are you saying? Like, my health's not as important as others? Because, I mean, I can't, we can't do what we do with this six-foot threshold. We can't. It just doesn't, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. And so we had to make that decision. And it could come back and bite us in the butt, you know, like, oh, you you voluntarily chose to close. You weren't told to close. You know, so it's just tough. It's tough questions. It's tough answers. You know, it's it's just weird. You know, it's just really weird. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, and it's it's almost like there's a zombie apocalypse, but because it's everything is empty but we don't have any answers or don't know when the end is in sight and it's it's just kind of crazy and we don't really fully understand what's going on and why some people get it some people don't and why it's spread so easily in some cases and not others and there's just so many questions and no real answers and it leaves everyone sort of in a question mark and each one of us have are obviously handling it differently based on who we are um, and businesses and stuff. But I mean, 
you know, we have hospitals that are needing people. So obviously those people are going to work because they're sick people and we need to contain this thing, you know, and then there's all the support businesses for the hospitals and the health. But beyond that, you know, we still need food. And, and what does that look like? There's no real structure to anything that's going on. You know, I can go to one grocery store chain. They let 10 people in at a time. You go to another grocery store chain and they don't even care. They're letting in as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we have no real consistency or boundaries of how to handle this. And I think as business people, you know, they're, yes, you know, we can, we can get out the other side. And I think you guys know that when the time comes to reopen your business, you know, hopefully that time comes is that you'll be ready and willing to, and you'll have a lot of employees that'll want to get back to work, but we don't even know what that looks like or when that's going to happen. So we don't even know how to prepare. How long is this going to take? You know, what are we actually preparing for? But you know, the scary thing about that is to me, um, what I think about is they're going to put, I mean, there's going to be different regulations on what we do. I mean, there could be not allowed. You can't have so many people in your business. Yeah, like a seating capacity. Like you can't have, you got to have a six foot space between people at all times. Like that could never change. That may never change. Like why all of a sudden would it? If six foot is how you can, they say prevent getting it. Why would it be like, okay, we're good. I mean, it's not like they're going to cure this. I mean, it's still going to be out there, I think. And if not, there'll be another one. So, I mean, you know, we can see it up to a hundred and something, something people, but it's going to end up being, we're only going to do business for 40 people, 30 people, 20 people, or just be to go where people can show up and then you have to draw a line in the parking lot and you got to stand there and then you can come get your food. And there's a ATM machine or a credit card machine outside. That they only, I mean, I don't know, you know, or you just pay mobily, where you don't interact with each other. I mean, that's, you know, these are the things that I think are going to happen. Yeah, we're going to have an extreme change in the way interactions right. are done and, and transactions are done and delivery services and at home meals and delivery services and and what a sit down restaurant actually looks like. Yeah. I think that that's a potential thing that's going to happen. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, something that I, that we talk about a lot in in our companies right now is what does it look like and how do we start preparing for this? Because we don't really know what's going on. No one has told us anything. So we could have extreme regulation that could literally hit you in the back of the knees and drop you to the ground. And we're trying to, you're going to have to train people in new ways to handle things. What does the food code look like? You know, what is these changes that'll come? And so, you know, I don't, you know, it'll be food created, not by humans. It'll be the way you, you hear, I mean, how McDonald's and them do it. I mean, it's press a button and the fries drop in and you press the button. You don't even touch the drink. You don't touch the ice. I mean, it'll be, non-human contact and it, it, it'll be processed food and i mean i guess it's just it, it won't be scratch cooking like it, it won't people won't trust it yeah i mean you know like it, it's just gonna it's gonna be so extreme i think because like i said this is so not real i'm sitting at home and i'm like oh we're home but we're not i mean this is something that's on our minds all the time you can't not think about it. You can't – it's not even fun. Like this isn't fun, but it's the reality of where we're at, and it's confusing. And to forward thinking this time, I don't even know what that is. Like I don't even know like how what are how can we get ahead of this and run our business the way you know it's going to have to be in the future because what is that? I mean we're in an old building. Our restaurant is in an old building. It is, you know, it's not brand new. It's rickety. It's, you know, we've made do with what we've got. And that may be a problem going forward. Well, um, and that's the whole thing. We don't, you know, and we don't, we have no idea. I yeah. will say, though, I, I'm, there's a lot of passing of um, things and people are close in restaurants. But I, I got to say, you know, I was back in a box store maybe last week 
and the sanitation there compared to a restaurant is significantly different. However, there's not as much contact. And, you know, it's one of those things where we're just not sure. I mean, God, we've had outbreaks and, and things happen before, but nothing like where it's spread this fast or where there's been so much close down. And, you know, there's not really, we've been given guidance, but we haven't been given what the plan is like so that's great that we have all these boundaries but what is the real plan to handle this what's the long-term plan that we're trying to understand to get to on how to handle this and yeah it's great that they want to talk about it in washington or on a global scale and, and everyone wants to talk about it but like the time for disagreeing and agreement is or we need to get pointed in a direction and at least start adjusting once we get in that direction but people need hope and an idea of that we're actually moving in a direction to to figure out what the next steps are. And you're right. There may never be a cure. You know, there may never be a vaccine or whatever. So, you know, how do we do that? And um, I'm probably I mean, messing yeah, up the, the medical terms. Cold. There's yeah. no cure for the common cold. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, and I mean, especially overnight. I mean, you know, the stuff does come out. But I mean, you know, for this to happen and they're like, oh, we can mix these two and do that. I mean. Who's going to trust it? You know, it's, it, I mean, if, if, if the fear of God has been thrown at people this fast, I mean, you can't just be like, okay, we're all good. Let's get back to normal. I mean, it's like, no, I mean, I'm scared. I mean, we own a restaurant. I promise you, I'm not going out to eat. So yeah. if I'm not going to go out to eat, why do I, why should I expect people to come eat at my place? Like, I don't think that's right. I mean, I'm not going out. I just, I mean, not because I don't want to, because I just don't, I just don't feel like it's safe. Like I, you just, just unknown. But I mean, like, which is weird because I'm not that way. Like, these are the things bother me. But now I just, I mean, I've had to cut my TV off. You know, you get too much information, and it like you get swayed in this way or the app or that way. You know, and then you know, yesterday the the governor spoke, and it was the most confusing speech. And I mean, I'm, I'm not the most educated individual, but it was like, it made no sense, the whole thing. It made absolute no sense. And then the mayor came on later, and she shut down the city of Atlanta. It was like bars, gyms, everything is shut down except for bank or whatever. Essential. Essentials. And, you know, restaurants that serve to go are essentials. So I'm like, it just, I don't get it. Like, I don't think restaurants are essential. I mean, I think people need to. I mean, if you don't have, I mean, like I said, like this, it's like it makes no sense. I, I can't really even say because I don't think people should be out. In my opinion, right now, what's two weeks? I think two weeks, and we'll see if it goes into decline. But I think the more contact, the more it's going to spread. Whatever this thing is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we obviously know hard. that it's hard to shut down yep. for two weeks. I mean, who does that? I've never done it. We've never had the restaurant closed for more than one day at a time. Two at the most. Yeah. Like this is unprecedented. We've never been closed for a week for anything since we opened for ten years. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting what you said about the news because I've actually when it first started I've actually not watched it much I mean I follow the stuff and I know the CDC and I look at the website because that's where I'm getting my information and then obviously the state of Colorado because that's where I am right now but I've had to steer away from the news one um, there's just a lot of information out there um, and I think it's it's heightening some of it and it's also well, some things are over exaggerated, some things are under exaggerated. So we haven't turned it on in a little bit also. And from what I've read, you know, I all I know is that I need to stay inside. As a family, we need to, you know, find things to do around our property. We have some land so we can stay together, but keep our distance from everything else. We have enough food in the house, so on and so forth. But it's very interesting in that we have to try to move forward as human beings and we want to be positive and have hope. 
but we can't do that if the thing keeps going on and we don't know what it is. So there's this weird thing that's going on where, you know, I feel it. It's like, you know, I'm hopeful, you know, I'm in the hospital food business, you know, and so, you know, it's a lot of our business. So we still do a lot of food for hospitals and long-term care homes right now because they need food. Yeah. Right. But the, the rest of our business, the retail side and the things like that, obviously it's tanked, you know, people aren't, you know, they're buying the essentials they need at the grocery store to survive. And that's about it. And they're preparing to hunker down for two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is. So, you know, they're buying more of the shelf stable long-term stuff. So the way food's being bought right now is totally changed. And, you know, do people still want to eat out? Yeah. And, you know, and I think the to-go thing concept, people are, are looking at it right now as a, a viability. But as less money comes in, as things go on, I think you need to continue to move your business forward and you need to innovate and try to stay open and make money. But at the same time, we're really looking at less people with money because the economy is slowing mm -hmm. down so much. And so... Uh, you know, there's, there's really no right answer on how to move forward on this one. And it looks so different for every person in the food business right now on what's really going to happen and how we're going to weather this storm. And so what you guys are doing, I mean, the whole city of Atlanta is shut down. It's only a matter of time before they squeeze a little harder, I see. And by that, I mean, okay, mm -hmm. well, the essential businesses are going to get smaller and smaller in definition. You know, yeah. so if it continues to spread, even though we're all on lockdown, then we're just going to keep quarantining harder. And and, yeah. and so that's the direction. I mean, history will tell you that in any situation ever that, you know, when something keeps happening, it don't, the controls only get tighter, um, right. at least from a government perspective. And so... How are we going to, you know, we've got to be prepared for that as human beings. And what does that really look like? And what can we do now to sort of take a step back and weather the storm as you guys are doing? You know, you made a decision. It's like, why am I going to stay open? Why am I going to have distress? I'm not going to make as much money anyway. It may cost me more money to stay open than to just close the doors for two weeks. And not to mention the emotional stress. So, you know, how do we do that? And, you know, hopefully it's only a couple of weeks, but I mean, realistically we could be in May or June before we have a real solution. So that's pretty scary, um, on a lot of levels. And I'm a pretty hopeful, positive person always, but the hard part for me is the same as you guys. It's the, there's too many different messages and it's too many mixed things. And there's too many experts talking about too many things. And right now we need a leader or a leadership on a global level to just yeah. say, this is what we're doing for right now. And even if it's wrong temporarily, at least we have a direction to go and we can pivot, but we need to be led as human beings. I think there's just yeah. so much confusion. Yeah, well, that was our thing. Like, I mean, we're sitting here at home going, should we, should, should we, we, back and forth? I don't know. Home? What should we do? How should we do it? Good ideas? Is it a bad idea? Um, you know, I wish that we had more information. And, of course, I think up all my other buddies have restaurants, businesses, and, you know, they're the same way. They're like, we don't know what we're going to do. Like, you know, they're all crunching their numbers. And if I do this and if I do that and this is the number, I'm just like, you're just throwing numbers out there. I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to do that. And I mean, how many employees and, you know, you want to run slim and, and I, and I really think there is no answer. I mean, leadership. Yes, I agree. But how do you lead something? You, I mean, every day it's changing and every, you know, you're putting it in the governor's hands and everyone's doing something different. You know, some are shutting down more than others, but I mean, yep. to me, I, I think it should be it's nationwide. A strict decision like across the board like this is what everybody should do yeah like, absolutely shut down not like let them all decide so you're here this city does this and that city's doing that and they're doing this like because you say god i wish i was in that city because that's that makes more does that makes more sense like it this isn't like north south east west this is across the board everybody going through the same yes some like you said 
you may make a decision and it may not be right, but if it's across the board, everybody's dealing with it and you can fix it as you go instead of New York's yeah. got really super strict and California's super strict. You know, they keep showing this. I mean, I'll see it. You know, there's a map and there's this many cases here and that many cases there. But I mean, who cares? There's cases in every single state. I mean, it's there. It's just going to spread. And I hear every day, oh, so-and-so got her, a guy, Grady. They just found out a thing. This guy, Grady, had it. I mean, you know, now it's going to go ramp it through the – I mean, you just don't know. So, I mean, I wish. I mean, I, you know, there is – I mean, you're right. To me, there is no guidance, and it's, and that's sad. Yeah. And that's why we're making our own decision. We're guiding ourselves and how we feel in our heart at this moment. And that is health. The only way we can stop it is that no one pulls into our parking lot and I don't have to deal with anybody and be like, I need your money more than my health is worth. And it's not. There's no price you can put on that. That's all you got. Well, and one of the things that I think is eventually we're going to need to be, if it's continuing to spread, even with all the quarantining, obviously, like I said, it's going to get stricter. What does that mean for grocery stores? I mean, we're starting to dabble around this world where all of our food is going to need to be delivered. Um, so we're mm-hmm. not in contact with people and that delivery is going to need to be safely handled in a way that doesn't spread the virus. And so, you know, instead of saying this is a possibility, we need to start figuring out this from an infrastructure level as a country, because that is a possibility. I mean, we can be pretty self-sufficient in our homes. We have TVs, we have radios, we have games we have the ability to cook as as long as the power stays on the water stays moving we can stay pretty self-sufficient at least in the united states as as well as many countries across the world but as long as we get food and beverage to the door or have a supply of it we're good for a while you know that so you know that's the part that i see the infrastructure and yes if someone gets sick they need the ability to go to a hospital and they need to have all the essentials for a hospital I agree with that. They're going to need food and supplies and medical stuff. So I get it that those industries need to keep going. But we sort of need to keep everyone from spreading it in that we're going to have to figure out a better way of dealing with it. You know, and if you're at home, you know, and this is one of the things like you want to keep everything going. You want to support the economy. But at the same time, as long as this is going on, the economy is not going to get restarted. So... But the thing is, to me, like when I think about it in the grand scale, like you're saying, I like, come up with solutions. Why can't Kroger, Publix, Ingalls, all these, all of them, just team up? Amazon, like let's form this coalition that's going to help this country. Where across the board, we have the facilities, we have the trucks, instead of, and you know, the people who have made us rich need us. Like, yeah. why can't it be like they just join forces and offer to offer delivery? I mean, there's Uber, there's Uber, there's Lyft, there's all these things that could get stuff out to people. And there's all these companies that have warehouses everywhere with probably tons of food because that's what they're saying now. It's like, you know, the places that Publix and that get their food from are running out. But then there's Cisco and there's U.S. Yeah. Foods who have all this beef and all this chicken and all this product that they are having to like. Because I have a friend from Cisco saying they're having to change their model to get into the grocery store market so they can get their product to them. I mean, why can't they? everybody be like, we got to build this huge, amazing team and, and help this country? It's not – it's about this country right now. You know, I don't understand. You know, it's – you know, Amazon's hiring 100,000 people. Kroger's hiring. So they know that people obviously need that service to work. They, you, I would think that they could make this work like now, where you order, get delivered instead of going to Publix. Because I've gone twice to the Publix, and it's packed. I'm like, I got, I can't have a single person through my door, but I can walk into Publix, and it is packed. And there's nothing on the shelves, meaning they're making money hand over fist. They're loving it. This is like a snowstorm every single day. I, it's just confusing. You know, it's like to me, those big companies need to step up and and put something together to help us. Yeah. No, I agree, and I think we're looking at and people don't realize this yet, but it may not be a war as in World War Two, but as industry, 
we're going to have to make sacrifices and change the way our model is. And, you know, similar to the car factories, um, yeah, making airplanes or tanks or whatever during World War II or (laughs) ships or whatever, it's, you know, if this thing really is going to be a long-term thing, we're going to have to consider doing exactly what you're saying, which is how do we come together as food and beverage industry and figure out solutions for this on a grander scale? How do we figure out transportation if we're, you know, a transportation company like Uber and Lyft and all that and figure out a solution on a grander scale to help contribute to it? If we're, you know, the railroads, how are we shifting our model to figure out solutions on a grander scale where we're not transporting the virus but we're transporting the things that still need to be done on a grander scale and you know and and at this point it's it's less about profitability as it's and it's more about survival and getting through this so we can figure out a way through this and whatever through this looks like it's stable enough where we can start having an economy again and and living our lives um the best that we can and it's not going to be pretty and it's going to be hard and it's going to be a lot of change if that's what ends up happening. Yeah. Um, but it's a question of we need to at least start making the steps in that direction. Even if it doesn't happen, we should at least be prepared in case it does. So, um, and you never well, know, I mean, you may find solutions worst anyway. Worst case scenario. I yeah. think we have to think worst case scenario now because I think this is the worst case scenario that just happened to us. Like, I mean, I've not spoken to a single person that's been like, yeah, saw this coming. I mean, <laughs> it's blindsiding, you know? And so I think going forward, we got to think that way. Like, it's going to get way worse before it gets anywhere remotely back to normal. I mean, well, well even that, <laughs> and people aren't going to trust it. I mean, you got young kids or you have no. immune compromised individuals and, and elderly. I mean, the if the confidence in being able to go out and spend money or go do things we used to do, I think we've quickly crushed that, um, obviously, because we've had to, because we don't want this to spread and overwhelm the hospitals. But also what's happened is now we've lost trust in it and the ability to go out and do it. So taking away trust is a pretty easy thing, but getting it back is a very long-term thing. You because know. you don't want – well, you don't want to be like, okay, we're good, and then people go out, and then there's another outbreak. It's like you know, there can't be. I mean once – whatever the control is, it ha- it can't just come back again and be like, oh, God, we've got more cases again. I mean that's the – and that's the thing. I mean it's so unknown. I mean it's scary, and I, like I said, I don't really think it's hit most of us yet. Because it's nothing we've ever encountered, but I mean the hardships coming forward, I think are going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's scary. yeah, it's very scary. So you know, one of the things um, as we sort of wrap this up, I mean, Kevin and Lee says, how I mean how are you guys doing in in general? I mean, obviously you're home now and, you know, I mean, how are you on a personal level planning on handling this? So we've talked about the business and the effects on that, but you guys are obviously home. Now you've decided to close the restaurant. So, I mean, have you brought enough food in? I mean, let's talk about on a personal level in your home, you know, what's your plan to weather? Because obviously we can't plan on someone else helping us right now because no one's making a real decision out there. And if they do, it doesn't seem to make any sense, at least to me. So, um, I mean, sort of how are you guys going to weather this? It felt like to me, the best thing to do was like finish out paying our payroll to our staff and making sure that was all taken care of. And, you know, almost something, not that I'm not going to worry about them, but it's going to be easier to not have that be the first thing, like, is thinking about them. So now tomorrow's going to be like a brand new day. So I can't even plan that far ahead to be even like, to be able to tell you what it's like. We, Kevin luckily has been a freezer hoarder for um, maybe the past five or six years. So we're good on the protein front because he seemed to 
know this was coming kind of in the back of his head, the way he has freezers in the garage. And, <laughs> but you know, it's like, we have stuff at the restaurant and if it comes down to it, then we can still drive in there and, you know, and then let staff know that we're going in and maybe they can, we can help them with a gallon of milk or some ground beef or whatever that's still there until. I mean, look, we have chickens on our property. Um, we have a, some water. We can, I can fish. I mean, we're thinking about it. Like these are all things that we enjoy as entertainment where now it's like, yeah, like we're going to lift up our land. Yeah, we're going to have to rely on the tomato plants and the squash plants. Yeah. Like before it was just a hobby and now it's going to turn into like survival. Yeah. So it's, you know, we, I mean, I think the peace of mind that we have pets, you know, luckily we come home and life hasn't really changed for them. I mean, we can kind of tell that they sense that we're not okay, but you know, just having that, I mean, it's, it's funny to say, I mean, you know, they're, they're there for a reason and we love them to death. But right now, I mean, they're really helping us. They, um, but we don't know. I mean, like Lisa said, it's, we'll wake up tomorrow and it'll be, weird but it'll be weird yeah. it won't be normal like i mean you know our days are like dang we had another great day oh business was great you know you know nice comments and you know happy customers and but now it's just it's silent like it it all stopped it stops today all that stops there's no i mean there's something to look forward to which would be getting back in it like we're not giving up it's taken the you know wind out of our sails a little bit, but we're fighters. You know this this will get us down for a second, and you know we'll you know we'll be little babies about it for just a second. But you know we know how hard we work, have worked to get to where we're at, and there's no stopping us because we know that people love what we do, and they love us as much as we love them, and we're just gonna fight. We'll fight and make. We'll make it work in whatever we have to do. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't know how to say this without embarrassing myself, but I'm always prepared um, for things. Like I always have, like you know, turn you know, and Deborah and I travel quite a bit around the world, so I always have random things like snake bite kits and first aid kits and yeah. turn purify water tablets and. Um, and all of that stuff and solar batteries and phone, solar phone chargers and all the crazy stuff, the tarps and the, the heat blankets and, um, you know, the foil that keeps you warm and foil yeah. tents and all that and, and food, you know, I've always, I've in the food world. So I know, um, I've always been worried about food shortages, uh, you know, change in the market, change in gasoline prices, you know, yeah. an insect or whatever that could take on agriculture, you're going to run into food sources. I mean, we're extremely exposed there. And right now with less people going out to eat, it's the potential that the farmers are going to grow less. So we are looking at food shortages. So we're almost inadvertently, as you said, going back to the basics of needing to grow our own food, needing to get that stuff, order the seeds in the mail, start growing your own tomatoes, start getting familiar with food again, because we need to have a different relationship with food as human beings. I mean, really. And... You know, I'm glad you brought this it up. This is a master reset. This is a map to me. This is a master reset. We have been trucking along way too fast and just not caring about nothing. I mean, to me, it's like, you know, technology and speed it up. And I think this is just the earth's master control all delete. Like, <laughs> you, you are like, you're not as, you know, fancy as you think you are. And if you don't, stop and you know smell the roses and 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 do like your grandparents did like my grandparents all did canning we would go there was a facility in here in decatur that we would go in the summer and my grandmothers of course i'm complaining like why are we going to be here but they're canning you know the tomatoes and the vegetables that they grew and now i know why because they came from a time where they had to do it if they wanted to eat during times where they couldn't grow that stuff they weren't going to the grocery store because they couldn't afford to go yeah and you know, I think, you know, I've said this in the conversations in the in the re, in here recently is, you know, you always talk about rainy day funds. People are like, What's, you know, you're like, yeah, whatever. I mean, not anymore. Yeah. There will, rainy day funds mean something. And we know now as a business and as individuals that you got to have it because 
something can happen. Like you don't expect some of this to happen and it can't. And now we know. And what you got is what you have. And that's it. I mean, you know, and we've realized that. So we've had to learn a big lesson and we're going to make, I mean, probably more me than Lisa major changes in the way I think and the way I do things. But I see it as a good thing. You know, it's some, I'm learning a lesson and it only made me stronger. Yeah. I think it's still going to make all of us stronger. And I mean, I think that's the thing is it's a reset button and we really got to go back to the basics and, and take a look around, appreciate what we have, you know, um, know that we're going to need to do, do things that differently, that this is an opportunity to relook at the way we do things, relook at the way we eat, relook at the way we, you know, have our food, we look at the certain comforts that we used to have that are different now. So, you know, I agree with that 100%, but, um, Lisa and Kevin, thank you guys so much for taking the time to get on. I know you have a lot going on and a lot of hardships going on, but I appreciate the vulnerability to share all of it. So, cause there's a lot of people out there and they reach out to me on Instagram a lot and, and they, you know, they don't, they feel alone. And I think something like what you guys are going through and sharing your story, um, certainly helps them to let them know they're not alone. I yeah. mean, coming from me is one thing, but coming from all these people who are getting on the podcast and trying to get on to share their story, this yeah. is a tough time right now in the food and beverage world. And it's a tough time in the world as a whole. So, yeah. you know, how do we keep people hopeful? Uh, you know, part of it is just telling everyone's story and them realizing that they're not alone. And in that being not alone, there is hope. And we have choices. Like you said, we just got to make new choices life isn't the same anymore so right and protect well, those around us right i mean we appreciate you doing this and asking us because i mean you know it definitely isn't easy for us to talk about this but i i agree i mean i know it helps me when i talk to other restaurant people right now or other business people you know i mean the comfort of knowing that we're not the only ones in it where you always think this is how can i feel like this knowing it's just the way it is right now and other people do. So, you know, we appreciate you doing this. Um, you know, it helps us even talking about it right now. It makes me feel better, even though there's no answers. But, you know, it's it's not something that you want to talk about. But we just appreciate you doing this a lot. Yeah, I figure it's the least I could do. I mean, I don't know what to do either, right? I mean, I know that I need to get hospital food out the door, and I can't even go into the facilities to do it. So all the employees are having to go in there because I don't want to travel and contaminate any of them or the food. So, yeah. I mean, we're on pretty strict um, rules with them about how they travel and, and all of that because of their essential um, operations for the hospitals. And so it's just crazy you know, so I figured what I can do is still give hope out there, um, whatever that looks like, because I'm not sure what it looks like, but I know that as human beings, hope goes a long way and we just need to do the right thing, um, and, and make sure we're not spreading the virus and be prepared when this thing is done to take advantage of whatever opportunities there are to rebuild our economy but in that, we need to know life isn't going to be the same anymore. What we used to do isn't going to be how we're going to do it in the future. What got us here is not going to get us to where we need to go. So yeah, it's just one of those things. So thank you guys again for your time. And, and I really appreciate you guys. And thank you for, again, for the vulnerability and the authenticity and coming back on. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Everyone listening in, um, thank you guys. Uh, stay hopeful. And if you're going through this and you want to reach out, please reach out to us. Um, I know Homegrown GA, at Homegrown GA on Instagram, they answer their messages. So if you're feeling something or want someone to talk to, I'm sure they would appreciate any conversation since we're living in a world now where you actually don't see people face-to-face -face anymore. So. Um, you know, let's use what we have to communicate with each other and reach out to them if you're going through something similar so they're not alone. And always feel free to reach out to me at Justin and the Food Entrepreneurs on Instagram and Facebook. You can direct message me uh, also at Justin Bizarro. So thank you guys for listening in. And everyone, um, have the best day that you can right now.